everyone! In today's video, we have part three of our focal length comparison. So we are up to comparing the 50mm prime lens versus an 85mm prime lens at a portrait photo shoot on location. So let's start shooting. For my 50mm lens, I have the GM50 f1.2 and I'm going to take a full body shot just here and then without moving. For my 85, I have the GM 85mm f1.4 and I'll take a shot from the exact same spot. And I also want to show you a comparison standing in the same spot as a close-up portrait. So with the 50, this is our shot. And with the 85 standing in the same spot, we get this photo. That's a really pretty shot there. Did you stand around here so like you're in the sun? The sun's actually nice and warm. So I was thinking for this one, it'd be pretty cool to do very like flowy, kind of like dreamy looking photos. Okay. Both the 50 and 85 millimeter are arguably the two most popular prime focal lengths for portrait photography. The reason for this is they are medium telephoto focal lengths that compress the background, make the subject stand out and produce beautiful background to foreground separation for that dreamy portrait look. I'm on the 85, so I need to stand a little further back for these. And I should put human IAF on. Yeah, your jacket off the shoulder looks so good. As you can see from this first comparison though, these two lenses can look super similar. So if you're in a position where you can only afford to add one of these two lenses to your portrait kit, then today's video is for you. Throughout this portrait session, I'm going to be taking the exact same photo on both lenses and showing you the photos side by side so we can see the similarities and differences. I'm using the Sony a7 IV camera body with both lenses and this is a full frame camera. Let's capture full body shots, which is a composition I love capturing on a longer focal length. Here is where you'll really start to see the differences between these two lenses. The 50mm shot looks super beautiful here. We have some nice background to foreground separation, amazing bokeh, and you can make out some of the details in our location, even though I am shooting this wide open at f1.2. Stand back, because I'm on the 85. The 85mm on the other hand, for me personally, has a little bit of an edge to the 50 shot. The 85mm takes all those points I love about the 50 but exaggerates it even more. The background is even creamier than the 50, the bucket is bigger, and Maya almost looks like she's been cut out and placed into the photo. I really love that you can go all out with an 85mm to capture super dreamy looking photos like this. While the 50 also can produce dreamy photos, the 85 has that extra bit of compression that adds a whimsical and otherworldly feeling to the photos you can capture with it. It's also versatile in the way that you can get these dreamy photos, but if you prefer the look of the 50, you can easily easily bump your aperture down to f2 or f2.8 to get a similar look with the 85. Maybe we should do like a sitting down one as well. Maybe in this patch of sunlight. <laughs> Love it. The styling is so like moody. <laughs> it looks really cool. I really want to make the most of this golden patch of sunlight we have happening in this park. It is so beautiful. So next, I'm getting some sitting down shots. I really enjoy that you can see more context in the frame with a 50 millimeter focal length. Since it's slightly wider than an 85, it is easier to include more of the location and your environment in your shots. For that reason, I can see the 50 millimeter focal length being a great option if you do a wider variety of photography like weddings, family photo shoots, travel and genres along those lines where the story and the location play a pretty important part in your portraits. That looks really really nice as a close-up portrait. In the 85mm shot on the other hand, I find that Maya really stands out in the frame and just pops. With the 50, your eyes dart around the photo a little bit more looking at the portrait but also taking in the details around her. In the 85mm shot, all you really see is the portrait because she is so isolated from the background. This makes the 85 an exceptionally good lens if you do a lot of portraits and headshots and photography around those lines. We can go to that little bit of sun there. Do you want to stand around here? Hopefully we can get you in the sun a little bit. Maybe where Lydia is actually. You guys swap. <laughs> and again, you can move around as much as you want. You can even like walk and yeah, look over your shoulder. 
For the next shots, I'm taking some mid-length portraits with the sun setting in the background. Here, you can see how similar you can make these lenses look depending on how far away you are standing from your subject, how far your subject is from the background, and how you're angling your lens to frame your shots. One of the downsides of having more context and details in your frame is that sometimes it can appear distracting. You can notice how the 50mm bucket is smaller in size compared to the 85, so we're going to have more of it in the frame. Seeing all that texture and detail can take away from the strength of the portrait. Since the 85mm background is blurrier, you can use that to your advantage. If you're shooting in an extremely busy location, maybe there are lots of details in the background that look distracting, maybe there are people walking around in the park. You can use the 85 to help minimize that detail and thus bring more attention to the subject in your frame. What's interesting here is that the 85mm is an f1.4 lens compared to the 50 which is f1.2 and I'm using both lenses wide open. Even though we are technically compensating for the distance with the 50mm having a faster aperture, you can see how much difference compression makes to the bucket and background because the bucket appears larger in the 85mm shot even though we're at f1.4. Speaking of which, Sony, when are we getting an 85mm f1.2? I have been waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm going to be 100 years old by the time it comes out. You can also see in this comparison, Maya has a bit of distortion in the 50 shot because I have to get in physically closer with the 50 to frame it the same as the 85. This means it's going to appear to stretch her body since it's a wider angle lens. Oh, beautiful. All right, so this is a close-up portrait. Now we have our headshots. Unfortunately, I didn't get the best comparison image here with the 85, so I have another photo to show you when we get to the side-by-side -side comparisons. But anyway, here we can see the difference these focal lengths make on the shape of your subject's face. Just like the full length and mid length shots, the 50 has a slightly distorted look, which makes the face appear a little bit thinner. The 85 tends to flatten faces and makes them appear a little rounder. Depending on your subject's face shape, it can be a very flattering lens for close-up portraits and it is one of my favorite lenses to capture this exact close-up composition with. However, if you have a subject with a rounder face like me, for example, I have a slightly roundish square jawline. I find that close-ups on an 85 for me can look unflattering as it makes my face look bigger. If you want to hear more about this topic, you can check out my 35 vs 50 vs 85 millimeter comparison where I get into this more. Okay, I want to shoot from down low. We can do like quite wide movements with this one. This is our last comparison and one of my favorite shots of the photo shoot. I want to incorporate more movement into these shots which I personally find is much easier to capture with a 50mm focal length. When Maya makes a quick movement, I'm able to take just a single step back in order to be able to reframe my shot the way I need to. The 85 is a little trickier to capture movement as it's a longer focal length, so I have to move even more to reframe my shots for quick movement and thus, there is more chance I miss out on that shot. Because it's a longer focal length, it also has a shallower depth of field, so there is more chance for an out of focus photo due to that too. Luckily, in this location, I had plenty of room to physically work with. I could stand as far away from Maya as I wanted to. But something to keep in mind is that you do require slightly larger locations if you work regularly with an 85mm. There have been plenty of times where I'm shoved into a bush or I'm standing in the middle of the road to capture a composition I want with a long lens. I feel like a cool one would be if we get your profile and you kind of just like look up, like shake your hair back. So to leave you with something, interestingly, last time I made this video many, many years ago, I ended up saying at the end, and I quote, for me personally, I tend to go for the 50 a little bit more as I do like that tiny bit of distortion in my photos. Now my opinion is different. Since I use a 35mm focal length as my main lens for portraits, which if you'd like to see the differences between 35 vs 50, I'll leave that video link down below, the 35mm is my wide, slightly distorted lens that I prefer now, and out of a 50 and 85, I prefer pairing the 35 with an 85 so I can capture those close-up headshots and background to foreground separation shots I miss out on with the 35. So 
that is all I have for today's comparison between the 50 and 85 millimeter prime lens. Let me know which one is your favorite down in the comments below and which photos you like the most. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.